Welcome to Whiteboard Friday. Of course, the big news this week has been that it's going to cost around $8 billion to clean up the Waikato River. Depends on how clean you want to get it, but that's to get it back to the level of being swimmable and fishable. That's what we promised Tainui in their treaty settlement. But of course, everyone can now agree that the one thing we shouldn't be doing in the Waikato catchment is converting any more land to dairy farming. But we've been saying that for quite some time. The real question is, why between 2007, when the deal with Tainui was signed, and now, did so much land get converted to dairy in the first place? The Parliamentary Commissioner for the Environment reckons that between 2008 and 2012 alone, some 28,000 hectares got converted to dairy. And the majority of that, some 19,000 hectares, were from forestry land. So the big question is, why did so much forest get converted to dairy in the first place? That's what we'll look at in this Whiteboard Friday. And the answer will shock you and surprise you and bring together all our work from climate change, from water quality and from tax into one uber ultimate Whiteboard Friday presentation. <laughs> first up, you've got to buy some forestry land. Now, the average bit of forestry land is actually quite cheap, but we want to compare like with like. So we'll go for a really good quality bit of forestry land and say we'll spend about $10,000 per hectare. So that's at the upper end of what you'd pay for forestry land. Now the first thing you have to do is pay a carbon charge because you're cutting down all those trees. Now back when the emissions trading scheme first kicked off, clearing a hectare of forestry land would have cost you around about $20,000. That's with carbon and about $20 uh, per tonne. So that's a lot of money to clear a hectare of land and you pretty much would have written the whole thing off right there and then. But thanks to some favourable things that happened in international carbon markets and a few tweaks that our government, government did to the emissions trading scheme, the, the price of carbon plummeted to 50 cents a tonne. So all of a sudden, it only cost $500 to be able to convert a whole hectare of uh, forest to dairy land. So it becomes a lot cheaper and we're back in business. What's the cost of conversion? Well, let's assume this conversion is going to be at the high end. We'll probably need some irrigation, that sort of thing. It'll cost around about $15,000 per hectare. Again, these numbers are illustrative, they're averages, uh, but they give you an idea of, of the overall reasons why people are converting to dairy. And once we've converted to dairy, of course, we can then sell that land. And that land is now worth, on average, about $35,000 per hectare. So we've made a profit selling it for $35,000, taking off the $10,000, the $500 per hectare for carbon charges and the costs of conversion, we've made a profit of around about $9,500 per hectare. That's pretty good going. But the good news is, on top of all of that, we don't even have to pay tax, because this is a capital gain. So, our tax is a big fat zero. We get to take home that whole nine and a half thousand dollars per hectare in conversion profits and retire somewhere nice. And of course you'll note that in there, although we paid a carbon charge, the cost of conversion didn't include the costs of extra nitrogen leaching into our rivers and didn't include the cost of water if we are irrigating. Both of those things came for free. So again, both of those factors help plump up that profit as well. So you can see how things like a carbon charge, any charges on nitrogen and water, would have a big impact on the viability of changing land from the use of forestry to dairy. And of course, tax matters too. That is why we've seen such a large amount of forestry converted to dairy over the past, since about 2007.